Hello YouTube stackers, this is ST with Silver Stacking 101. Welcome to Laid Back Wednesday where we discuss money matters in general. In this video, I wish to address the term financial advisor. Also, wealth advisors, retirement advisors, wealth coaches, etc., etc., etc. Now, the problem with these titles it's not really descriptive. There are people that are dedicated financial professionals that are highly trained and have great ethics that have these titles they use. And there's also snake oil salesmen charlatans that call themselves financial advisors, wealth advisors, etc. First of all, let's talk about what a financial advisor is. There are two different types. Most people run into the first type. These are actually commissioned salespeople. They earn a percentage of putting you, the consumer, into various investments. Now, it's kind of like asking a barber if you need a haircut. If you someone calls themselves a financial advisor but they work for a life insurance company and all their products are centered around whole life if you ask do i need life insurance absolutely it's like asking a barber if you need a haircut if i walked into a barber shop today with my hair cut the way it is and asked the barber do i need a haircut most likely he would say absolutely get up in the chair let's get you going now, it doesn't mean commission financial advisors are bad people necessarily, but their judgment's kind of cloudy. I had a new client I was interviewing uh, the other week. Guy comes to me, and we're talking in general, and I said, remember, you need the three Gs, gold, guns, and grub. This guy was in a financial position where he should be prepping somewhat. He could afford to do that and not impact his life. And by gold, I mean precious metals. Guns, I mean ammo too, and food. The guy said, well, I brought that up to my financial advisor because someone else had told him the same thing. His financial advisor spent 20 minutes saying why that was not necessary. It was a commissioned financial advisor. Why would he say that was not necessary? He wasn't getting any money off of it. There was no commission in it for him. So keep in mind, commissioned salespeople that are financial advisors are somewhat um, persuaded by what's going to put money in their pocket. It doesn't mean they have horrible intentions. It doesn't mean they're not trying to do what they think is best for the client. However, they have a vested interest and that's got to be in their mind somewhere. I want to bring this up at this point. If I'm ever hired to do a paid endorsement, I pledge to you I will disclose it is a pledge paid endorsement so you may consider it accordingly and if i tell you about a good deal somewhere that i'm not getting a penny for uh i will disclose that as well now let me tell you a funny this is a great story well it's a terrible story but got a great ending i was at the office one day and my aunt called me I said st I need to come and talk to you. I got a problem. Well, my aunt and her husband have accumulated some decent financial resources over their lifetime. At the time, this about 10 years ago, she was in her early 70s. She comes to me, her financial advisor had lost a bunch of money. Now keep in mind, this is before the crash of 08. And she had all the records with her. The company 
that the financial advisor worked for was very, very well known. If I called the name of the company, you most likely would know it. As she spread out all the paperwork and I started looking at it, no one in their right mind would, with her risk tolerance, place her in some of the risky investments this guy did. But it got worse. He started churning the account, making trades so he could get the commission off the trades. Looking at the nature of the investments that he put her in, at 71 years old, she wasn't looking for income. She was looking for wealth preservation above all. And he put her into high risk, high growth potential stuff. No one does that for a 71 year old in her position. He also turned the account we were looking at five, six, seven trades a month. In her position with a diversified investment base, there may be three to four, maybe five a year to make the adjustments as the time goes on and situations change. This guy was trading more in a month than a reasonably prudent broker would do in a year. She had given him authority to manage her account because she didn't understand anything about investments. Now, the story has a pretty happy ending. The guy had been doing this for 30 something years, been with the company. Well, I called a buddy of mine that I've done a lot of work with that's uh, an attorney. The attorney sent one demand letter to the company and the company immediately without hesitation, paid her because it was so atrocious, so outside the realm of what a prudent financial advisor would do. So, this guy happy ended to that story, but commission salespeople will tend to do stuff to earn commission. That's kind of what they do. The second type of financial advisor, and the one I recommend, is a fee-only financial advisor. That's where, where the client goes to a guy or a gal, and the financial advisor is only receiving money from the client. The client pays for the financial advisor's time. Why is that important? The financial advisor does, does not have a dog in the fight except the well-being of the client. There is no uh, commission involved to the fee-only financial advisor. Most of these guys are highly educated, highly trained, highly ethical. Now, there are exceptions to every rule. I would suggest whatever area you you are in, if you want to use a financial advisor, talk to your accountant, see who they recommend for a fee-only financial advisor. I have a few I have sent business to, but actually my college investments management professor is in my area, and he is now in private practice, and we got along great in school, and I have sent him several clients over the years. Uh, great guy, and plus we have the aviation background, so that kind of works. And so I got somebody I work close with. Got a couple other uh, other ones I work with, and I send clients to, depending on the situation. <clears throat> so it's very important before you trust anybody for their advice. You check them out, number one. Number two, understand what their position in the game is. And number three, never just turn over your finances to anybody without monitoring your finances yourself. Get second opinions. If you got a question, talk to your accountant. If your account accountant cannot answer the question, he or she should be able to refer you to someone that can. Now, on Saturday, 
I'm going to have a great video. It is on silver price predictions. No, I'm not going to predict silver prices. I am going to do a video on why every silver price prediction you see on the net is complete bullshit. Please tune in for that. I will outline my reasons why. If you need to reach me offline, my email address is stsilverstacker at gmail.com. God bless you. Subscribe if you haven't. Thank you for watching.